This woman weeps for her grandson, less than a month old, and killed in an airstrike in Rafah. The Hamas-run health ministry says more than 20 people died. Rafah is Gaza's southernmost city and was previously declared safe by Israel. Now, this man says the world's conscience is dead. There's no humanity. His home was among several building, buildings flattened in an overnight bombardment of Gaza's second busy, biggest city, Han Yunus. As the territory's humanitarian crisis deepens, by the day, this Arab ambassador to the UN says it's time for the world to stand together and push for a ceasefire. If people are not dying in the conflict today, they are dying because of a collapsing medical system, a collapsing nutrition system, lack of food, lack of water. There really is a moral imperative for us to take these messages back to New York and do everything we can across the board uh, to make sure the civilians in Gaza don't suffer as much as they are suffering today. Let's go now to our journalist on the ground, Iris Mackler. She follows it all for us. She's in Jerusalem. Iris, let's start with some breaking news. Israel mm -hmm. says it has recovered the bodies of two hostages today. That's right. We have just heard within the past hour uh, that Israel conducted a military operation to retrieve the bodies of two hostages, um, and they were uh, retrieved. They have now been identified as 27-year-old Eden Zaharia. She was at the rave festival, the music festival on the border of Gaza on October the 7th. And a soldier in his 30s uh, who is believed, um, and his name is Ziv Dado, and he is believed uh, to have actually been killed on the day on October the 7th and his dead body taken into Gaza, presumably for the purposes of some kind of swap uh, later on. That was the thinking. Um, and, uh, you know, his family had been warned that he might have been killed already. But Eden Zaharia's family actually thought she was still alive. So it's been very distressing news for them. They were planning to hold a birthday party for her this week in her absentia. Uh, and what we've learned is that it was actually a military operation that was conducted uh, and that two soldiers were killed during the operation to retrieve these two um, hostages' bodies. We have since learned, putting two stories together, that uh, one of those soldiers was actually, uh, this, his name is Gull Eisenkot, he's the son of Gadi Eisenkot, a former chief of staff of the Israeli military and a current member of Israel's war cabinet. So his funeral was held three or four days ago, and now these two stories, which were so important in Israel, have come together, uh, and we can see what a costly process it is to try and rescue hostages. Now, in the light of what has happened today, where do negotiations on the release of the hostages stand right now, Iris? We have been hearing reports, and they are tentative reports, that that negotiation for a release of hostages and a ceasefire, the truce that we saw uh, well, well over a week ago now, but that did last for a week, um, that there's some kind of renewal, a possibility of renewal, I'll put it like that. We don't interview the people who really know, and that's the leaders of Hamas, um, the Gaza branch of Hamas, who are presently under the ground somewhere in the Gaza Strip. Uh, even I would say that the outside leaders don't really know. But what we do here, it started as a, at a, a Western website, Axios, a news website in the US, and they reported a Western, um, sorry, a Washington approach to Qatar, to one of the negotiators, to start it all over again. Since then, in the past two days, we've seen it on various Arabic language websites, uh, including one Saudi website that even named some of the uh, potential people who would be swapped, uh, which would include a leader um, of Fatah, not Hamas, who uh, has been held in an Israeli prison for many years now, Marwan Barghouti, a possible leader of the Palestinians altogether. Uh, so that was an interesting suggestion very concrete. And then today we've seen this also reported in the Israeli media with the suggestion that um, the head of the Mossad and his partner who do the negotiations have been told to start again to listen to what's being offered. So this is all, it's not concrete yet, of course, Hannah, but it's the first time I think that we've had something like this uh, again 
in this time since the the last truce collapsed when um, Hamas wouldn't release the, uh, the the hostages that it had guaranteed or agreed would be released the women and children who remained so perhaps something slightly optimistic on this very sad day when we look at what's emerging from Gaza the pictures really are devastating yeah Iris Mackler in Jerusalem always appreciate your reporting